So my first flower, I'm gonna have it be red. So I'm gonna start with some berry wine to deepen the colors for the background petals and some cardinal red. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention, I may use some apple red for some of the centers. This is a real bright, cherry red um, that really will highlight some centers. And when I mean the centers, where the flower, the outer petal is a darker color and the inner part of the petal is a lighter color. I have a lot that just seem to glow from the center. So there are berry wine and the cardinal red. Dampen my brush, and then I'm going to just lay it on a towel. This is an old t-shirt to get most of the water out. So I want my other battery. I want to kind of place my flower. I have a tendency to grow my flowers as I'm painting them, and I want to prevent myself from doing it. So I'm going to have like a flower kind of going off this way. I don't want it to be any taller than this. So I'm gonna make myself a mark to go to. And then I don't want it to be any wider than this. So I made myself some parameters. And then I'm just gonna start creating my petals. Now I'm gonna get myself some berry wine on the brush. I didn't clean it, no need. And I'm just gonna create some tear drop petals. Press, lift, twist with my fingers and come to a point. Reload. I'm going to do this again at an angle so you can see it. Let me see if you can see it. I press down, pull, lift, and twist. Now by making it take so long or extenuating the time I'm doing that, exaggerating it I should say, um, it made it a little bit different. It's still, I love it. It's no big deal, but I'm just letting you know that I would normally be much quicker in making the petals. And you don't have to always do three. I don't, I don't do the complete flower because some are going to come up overlapping this. So here's another one. Press, twist, lift, press, twist, lift, press, twist, lift. And I'm always coming to a center point. So I've got to decide I could put some in the middle that will be underneath the lighter colors. And if you want to create a complete flower, go right ahead and finish it, knowing you're going to go overlap it anyways with the lighter colors, but it will come through. Reds are not opaque. Maybe do a couple. You don't want it all lined up. See, that's kind of lining up. I'm going to go up a little bit. Not too far because I don't want to get myself in trouble by growing this flower. And that's all well and good. Now I'm going to go in. I just rinsed out my brush and I damp, uh, dried it, basically tapped it on the towel. Now I'm going to go into the cardinal red and I'm going to overlap these petals. They will not all be perfect. I have to redo some because I get a little wonky, but wonky is unique and good. Now, if you want to add some streaks into your paint, your flower, I have one side loaded with cardinal and I'm going to load the other side with a touch of berry wine and then I'm going to pull the petals. It just has a hint of the berry wine going on there. Don't get so caught up in making petals that you kind of lose the shape or where you're going with your design. I can do that. So I um, try to remind myself, not just you. I'm going to put some apple red out and you'll see how bright this red is. Can you see it on the palette? Yes, there's a, seems to be a lot of orange in that. So I'm going to first start with loading one side with cardinal and I'm going to load the other side with the apple. And that should bring up the color just a touch. Keep it airy. Do not overlap it where it's just one mass of flowers. Have little gaps and holes in there. I got this too square on top for my taste, but just going to add a couple little 
up there without growing it too much. All right, so right there needs a petal. Sometimes I have the stamens already there, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just go in and make the flower. I just need to imagine where the umbrella, like the umbrella, what do you call them, arms, come up. Now I'm going to finish a couple of the blooms down here. And you note this red is, you could see through it. We'll come back in later, maybe with a glaze to kind of accent some colors. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't want it to be too fussy. So there is our first flower, geranium flower. So we can come in later after this is dried and we can put in some more of, uh, do another layer of the petals. And I'm pointing with a wet brush and I just got a blob of water. Let's get that taken care of. Okay, so there is the petals. I'm gonna get my number 10 flat. I just had, oh, there it is. And I have soap in it. I leave, if you ever watched my uh, video on how I take care of my brushes. Now these brushes I've had since 2016. Why I have this taped is because I once left them sitting in water, the wood absorbs the water, and it cracked the paint and the paint was flaking off. But still, I've had these since 2016. This is 2021. So that's what, five years? And they're still working for me. I just now bought another set and I still haven't even opened the package. So I'm gonna do the petal, not the petals, the stamens and stems, not stamens, what are they called? The umbrella handle things that come underneath the stems and the little extra stems. So I'm double loading my brush. Can you see? Probably not. Let's get underneath here. Double load with the two greens, thicket and citrus green, or whatever two greens you are using. I have a good chisel edge on my brush and that's what I want. So I'm just going to lightly, can you see what I'm doing? I can't do this at an angle because if you're not straight up and down, you're not gonna get thin lines, but I'm gonna draw on the chisel edge my triangle. Now I'm gonna, right there's kind of how I want that to look. And I want these all to come to one point right there. I put the dot there so you could see the point. And I should have drawn the point before I did that, before I drew them, just so I'd have the point to come to. I drug into the red. That's fine. It's all part of it. Don't worry. Don't let it stress you out if you create little things like that. So let's get just a little bit wider. And then we're gonna add some more flowers over on that side. Wider is still okay. Taller, I don't want. So I rinsed out my brush, since I now know where everything's at, and I will add some more petals. I'm gonna do some of the berry wine way out here. Now remember, it's face, kind of facing outward, so both of these need to be more this direction and that direction. Maybe one right here. And you could also go into the red with the berry wine. Add those petals, it'll be blended in. We're not going for perfection, remember. Do some truncated petals. A truncated petal is, you're doing the three, and then you're doing a dash, dash, as if that flower is facing you. So all you're seeing is the front edges. Up here is the same. We pretty much have it. Now, what's the problem I see with this? It's too even. So I'm gonna put a flower right here. I'm making smaller petals so that it goes up and down, up and down, not just straight across. It still has a little bit too much straight across. So this one, I'm gonna create a flower there. So there is that flower 
pretty much done other than we don't have the dangly down buds. Now I have my, this is the Royal Majestic 10 Ott. You could also do this with the other liner brush. Or um, since you have the one from Donna Dewberry, let me see, this is a Donna Dewberry liner. Let me see, script liner. Let's see if I can do it with this. Bit narrower enough that I like it. Okay, so my brush is wet. I'm coming over to my puddle of paint and I'm making it inky without it being too watery. And you see, I'm kind of mixing my colors. I shouldn't say kind of, I am mixing my colors. Now twist and pull your brush to a point. And then you see the point where you your arms came to? Just make a little draping thing. You can make them shorter. Some of these are really tight against the top of where those points all come together. So we have the stem, these umbrella arms, and the flower buds. So we need to put those buds on. And what I did with that is I used my filbert. So the filbert, number eight filbert, and I loaded it with cardinal red, just on the tip. See, it's just on the tip. And what I'm going to do, see if you can see in the so I'm going to touch, press, lift. And you see how it makes a teardrop? I was on the edge of the chisel edge of the brush. Same here. See if I can do this so you can see. Touch, press, lift. Get a little more, just make sure I have the paint. And I'm right on that stem. Touch, press, lift. And touch, press, lift. Now how I connect that is very simple. Come back with my liner brush. I go back in the green. Now many times it would have dried by the time I do this. So let's see how this will work. And I'm going along this and pull it in. Or you can go the opposite direction. Start at the tip and pull it that way. And you see the green overlaps the red bud just slightly, but connects it to the stem. Just like that. Don't worry about being precious about it. These are not perfect. In fact, um, I have some that are so short. They're right there at the tip. And you could just do those in green because the little bud isn't even showing yet. So you just do a teardrop. See, I'm using the liner brush. Touch, pull touch, pull to connect it to that. I need to straighten that one up. Put a little green back over this red and it all works. So there's our basic flower. You can come in and put a few dots in the center if you want. I'm going to leave it for now because I do want to come in and deepen the color. You don't have to. You could leave it where um, the white is showing through and it brings some brightness there. But I think I want to come back with a little bit of the brighter red, the apple red, and go over it once it's dry. When it's dry, you can really uh, see the difference. Okay, so there's our first complete flower. So what I want to do next is I want to bring in an orange one. 